When I started at Dun DIY, I really didn't know much about working with power tools. I approached them with so much caution, my projects were taking twice as long, and I wasn't getting the full use out of the tools. In Tools 101, I'm sharing with you everything you need to know so that you can DIY with confidence. I'm Kirsten Dunn, and this is Dunn DIY. For most projects, whether you're hanging a picture or building a piece of furniture, the power drill is going to be probably your most used power tool. A power drill is used both for drilling holes and driving screws. If you're working with hard or knotty material, or if you're putting in a screw or a nail close to the edge of your board, you're gonna to wanna to pre-drill. And that just means that you're drilling a hole slightly smaller than the size of the screw or the nail before you put in the fastener. Eventually, as you get comfortable working with a power drill, you're going to learn to identify the times that you do need to pre-drill and the times when you don't need to as much. Now, I always pre-drill when I'm building a piece of furniture or something that I, I really want to be perfect in all of the details. And I don't pre-drill when I'm working with soft wood and I'm putting together something quickly where it's not going in the center of my home and the details aren't quite as important. That being said, there are times when you don't want to use a power drill, and this is mainly when there's a potential for overdriving the screws. So obviously you wouldn't use a power drill for taking apart your eyeglasses. You also don't want to use it when you're working with plastics or delicate materials or really small screws. The other time when you don't want to use a power drill is when you actually need to use an impact driver. Now an impact driver is like a drill, but it has a hammer mechanism that actually does a lot of the work for you. So you're going to want to use an impact driver when you're working with especially hard material, really thick pieces of lumber, or when you're just doing a big project like a deck that has a lot of repetition, it's going to take a lot of the weight off of you and put it on the tool. Now you can use an impact driver as a replacement for a drill in almost any scenario, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using impact driver grade bits, because if you don't, you risk the chance of the bits shearing off. Now something I like to use my impact driver for is the Craig jig. You don't need an impact driver for this, but I just find it makes the workload a lot lighter for me. Now if you don't have a power drill at home, there are some workarounds. For drilling holes, you can alternately use a hand drill, and if you're driving screws, of course, you can use a screwdriver. Working with a new power tool can feel overwhelming, but we promise it doesn't have to be. The hardest part is picking one out and picking one up. Once you have a few reps under your belt, you'll be drilling and driving with confidence in no time.